My name is Terry Gilbert. I'm the application scientist at the Allen Institute, which means I get to interact with people who are learning to use the applications or who have questions about being able to use our data. So, um, you know, you've seen uh, images of this uh, earlier on. So we started back in 2003 with the, with the gene expression atlases. And some of you have already used the gene expression atlases. So we've got uh, three my mouse in situ hybridization atlases, and then we moved into microarray and other transcriptomics, RNA-seq, for our human atlases. And, um, and then we, uh, at, as soon as we had pretty much mapped, mapped gene expression in the brain, it's not comprehensive, it's not exhaustive, but we pretty much accomplished what we set out to do. We started to ask more detailed questions, which was, were talk, was talked about um, this morning. And uh, the Mouse Connectivity Atlas was our first foray into non-gene expression work. We use genetic tools, uh, absolutely, but, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, what I'm gonna be talking about is the cell types database and the data that Basilka and, and uh, Costas has talked to you. I'll show you how to access that data and how to use our web interface uh, to have access to that data. Um, we also have a booth at FENS, so while you're at FENS, one of the things that you, should, you can come see is our newest data set, uh, the Brain Observatory. And um, thank you for those of you who responded to my survey, because it, it, it became pretty clear that I needed to do a little bit of training just on the very first of our data sets. And this is actually a hands-on session, so you'll be uh, actually going through uh, the application while we're doing this. So we've got people from the, from the Institute who, if you have any issues about if I click too fast or if I move on to something or you don't understand what I did, just raise your hand and one of them will come and help you out with that. So Jane talked a little bit about this. Uh, what, you know, we started with the genetic tools and then what, we're, what we're, you're gonna be seeing mostly is the, uh, the morphology, physiology, as well as gene expression at the single cell level. So Jane talked about this, I'm not gonna go through all this. But one of the things that we've gotten very good at at the Institute is uh, taking a lot of data and then integrating it. So that's, the, that's kind of the idea. We're in the process of collecting a lot of data, and, uh, and once we have enough data, we'll start to do some integration and, uh, to understand the cell taxonomy. So uh, one of the things I wanna do is I wanna interact with you. And one of the ways that we can do that is for you to let me know what you're actually doing. Um, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm gonna be asking you to perform some of the searches on our website. And this is a way for me to find out what the answer is. So this is a, this is a simple question first. What's your first name? There's three different ways you can respond. So you can, you can text this to 22333, two, two, three, three, three. right? You can go online, you can go to pollev.com, Terry Gilbert 982, or if you're on Twitter, you can tweet your name at T. Gil Ho. And so, uh, and then once you are set up, you'll actually be able to, what, once you do it the first time, it, it, it'll be easy for you to just enter responses. So I'll give people a, an opportunity to, to get their name on the board. Okay, so you want to go to our website here, which is brain-map.org, and I've got, it, I've got it shown here. And there's a couple things that I want to uh, demonstrate for you so that, you know, when you come back, you'll have an access to being able to find what you, what you're, uh, what you're, what you need to know, because I'm not going to talk about all of our applications. So uh, the, first, the first thing is our site search. So from that box up in the top corner, uh, if you have a gene or a structure name or, you know, there's, or a, a, an experimental ID, that's a good box to put it in and it'll, it'll take you to a faceted search results page. So if you're interested in a gene and the different experiments that we've done on it, that's, a, that's the first place to look. We've also got an overview page. So, and that, and you, you'll, you can actually see this is what the, the, the page looks like here. On the overview page, it's actually a, the online version of, of the, our, our, our pipeline products, all of the different products that we have online that you have access to. We also have tutorials. So those are short five to seven minute videos to actually get you in and out of a, an application really quickly. Um, once you get into any of our applications, 
which you can do from this drop down menu. We're going to go to the cell types database first off. You'll notice that there's now documentation and help. And those are, uh, those are places that you should definitely go look, especially if you're going to use any of the data. So the data that's online, images, any of the data that we've got is free and available for you to use. You are welcome to publish with it, uh, write grant applications, um, use, it, use them in presentations, but that the data is available for you to use. And if you do use it, I recommend that you read the documentation so you, find, you, know, you can find out how you, you got this data. Uh, you'll also, uh, there's an online help. So that's uh, sh steps going into each of the different apps, how to do different searches. You're going to learn about some of the searches here, and it may be that you, know, you want to um, remember how to do that. You can just go through and look at the help. Also, from our, the, the front page is the reference atlas. <coughs> our reference atlas is, you know, you don't actually need to be a neuroanatomist anatomist anymore because we had some really great anatomists that went before us that created digital applications. And so if you are, if you, especially if you teach neuroscience or if you want to understand from what part of the brain uh, you're, you're pulling cells or you're looking at, the, our reference atlases are, uh, are an extraordinary tool, which I'm not going to show you about, show you all. So uh, you, know, you can definitely go in and start poking around in, the, in that. So I want to start a little bit with the, the gene expression atlas. And so this is, and I'm going to go really quick through this part, and a lot of you actually have had access to this. So uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to go quick, but if you have questions, just raise your hand and one of the, one of the Allen table will come talk to you. So um, the first thing is find your favorite gene. So if you go to our web page, which is uh, written up here, just type in your favorite gene, or if you don't have a favorite gene, you can use one of these genes here that I've, that I've given for you. So to look for that. Okay, and then the question to answer, so what was the gene, what gene did you choose, and was there expression? So you can respond with gene with a yes, gene comma yes, or gene comma no, the gene name. So what was your favorite gene, which gene did you type in, and is there expression? So now, looking for a gene is relatively simple. You just type in your gene name, you'll get a list of suggestions. Okay, so this is, so the histogram is one of the places that you'll, 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 you can tell that there's expression. You, you can also tell that there's expression once you have this from our expression mask. So um, GNRH actually is only a very, very few neurons. So and they're, it's highly expressed in a, a small, small number of neurons. So the histogram isn't going to tell you much in that case. It's actually neurons that are down here in the hypothalamus, and so it's, you know, in, like hundreds of neurons. So it's a very small number um, of neurons here. So that's one of the ways that you would find, that, that you would find uh, gene expression. So what gene expression looks like is these are some of my favorite genes. It's, it's usually very discreet. These are the Purkinje layer here. Uh, this is CA2 specifically. So the, the data is actually quite beautiful. Um, but it's just basically, it's just hundreds and thousands of, uh, thousands of two-dimensional images, which um, in, a, in and of itself isn't that extraordinary. What's, what, is, what has this resource be uh, useful and extraordinary for you is that we have collected the data in, in such a systematic way that we can actually register it back into three-dimensional space. So there's a couple things that we did for this. Our first version of, the, of, our, of our atlas was a, it was a single mouse that was sliced at 25 micron sections, nissel stained, and on, on every fourth one of those images, our anatomists drew on the structures based on the cytoarchitecture. And then from this two-dimensional atlas, we created this three-dimensional atlas. And so you can actually see here the, the grooves from the deformation from the slicing. And then there's, there's a, a lot of warping that had to go into creating this space. And we register all of our data, uh, our gene expression, the projection, cell types data into this space. This is actually the horizontal, horizontal plane reconstructed from the coronal, coronal images. Um, but you can tell from this that it's, it, it's not 
the registration is not great. And as we got more and more precise data down to the single cell level, we needed a higher resolution common coordinate framework. And we are in the process now of creating that. So this, so instead of using that single mouse, we now have a, an average brain of about almost 1,700 brains um, that uh, our anatomists are now drawing in 3D. So it's not a two-dimensional atlas that's been warped into three dimensions. It's actually, it was actually created in three dimensions. And all of our data is now being registered to, uh, to this, to this um, reference atlas. This reference atlas isn't complete. You can tell from here. It will be complete, probably not until, not absolutely complete until sometime in 2017. But the cortex will be complete by the end of this year. OK, now, once you have this three-dimensional space, there's a, a, there's a lot of informatics that can actually go on top of the data. So we've registered all of, you know, this is, a, this is what the data looks like when you subtract out the background. We've got an expression mask. mask. So low expression is in the blue and green, and high expression is, the, is in the red and yellow. And it's been registered into this space. So first of all, you can see gene expression in three dimensions, which you know, actually works better for our brains. But there's a lot of things that you can now do with that data. For one, you can start to look and see where gene expression is the highest for a particular gene. You can also take a look at all of the genes' expression and see what gene expression itself has to say about structure. So that's, you know, and this is, you know, when I talk about having a, a lot of data that we could then do informatics on top of to actually have the, the data itself tell us something about the brain. So which structure of yours shows the highest expression? Now, given the, the bug, chances are the only way you can do that is to look at, the, is, is to look at this, this histogram. So you can actually, so, th so this gives you a better sense of what, what it looks like, but uh, all the informatics that go on top of it isn't, isn't completely ac accessible here. But when you do do a search, let's, I'm going to show, show you one. For example, proteinorphin, which is one of the ones I suggested. You'll notice that there is a, now you can see that there's gene expression in the, and uh, in, this, in this histogram, which when you click through, you can actually see it here now. So what structure shows the highest expression? If you can tell from this limping web, Okay, so that kind of gives you, that starts to get, give you a sense of it. Now, um, chances are what you, what you used to, to do it was, I, was the histogram, because there's really no other way. But uh, when, you, when you go back and, and practice with this, I recommend that you look through the images so you can actually get a sense of how that, how that actually works. I wonder if One of the cool features from this, this one, it, you notice if you go into the high resolution image viewer and then uh, click on the key, is that going to work? No? Yep. That won't work either. I suspect there's something, there's something uh, up with the, with the mouse brain atlas. And then some other way. What was the some other way? Just new? That's, you know, that's one of them. Or just looking at the images. OK. So now there's another, there's another kind of search, which is a differential search. So you may not know what, you, don't, you might not have a favorite gene. You might not know the name of any gene at all. But you do know the name of a structure or a region of the brain that you're interested in. And in this case, this is what you would use the differential search for. And the differential search is accessed from the radio this radio button up here. If you click on the differential search, what you can do now is you can uh, put in a target structure. For example, the striatum. And what you also need is a contrast structure. So by default, you've got the entire brain. So what, what this is going to look for is it's going to look for genes that show high expression in the striatum compared to the rest of the brain. Right, and that's, um, 
And this is possible because we've, like I said, we've registered gene expression uh, to a reference atlas. So you can look for, across all the different genes, the genes that show high expression in, in the striatum compared to the rest of them. And it, it will return a list of genes based on, uh, based on your, based on your criteria. And it gives it back to you in full change. So um, the uh, Adora 2A, you can see from here, has high expression in the striatum compared to the rest of the brain. So that's, that's the, the differential search. So now your task then is to find a layer-specific gene in the visual cortex. So there's a, a couple different ways to be able to search for genes. I sh just showed you the differential search, but I want to also point out this, uh, this function, AGEA, which is our anatomic gene expression atlas. It's from the, the banner up here. And when you open up this, this particular, I wonder, I wonder if this is going to work at all. <coughs> well, we'll actually see, because I can, I, can, I can walk you through how to use this, and we can even do the do a search if it comes up. OK, so this one, what this is going to show you is, uh, is the coronal. It, I, I don't even have an image of it. Uh, it's, it's the coronal sections and then the reconstruction of the sagittal and the horizontal, and these crosshairs gives you access to any area at all in that, in, in that brain. And since it's, let's see if that, no, you can't even pretend to make it work. And what this, what this will do is it'll, it'll find, actually, let me, just to, so this is, one of the things that we did with this brain is we voxelated the entire brain, which means that we sliced it up into 200 by 200 by 200 micron voxels. And, uh, and then each voxel then has a spatial coordinate as well as 4,000 genes. So we picked uh, 4,000 genes, the ones that we, we uh, assayed in the, in the coronal plane. And so you've got a signature, so to speak, of 4,000 genes plus a spatial coordinate. And then what you can do is you can now compare every voxel in the brain to every other voxel in the brain. And uh, this is just a, an example from one of the papers that describes AGEA, uh, where each voxel has been uh, uh, separated maximum dissimilarity. So, so basically, you'll have correlations of the voxels that are most similar. And as it turns out, and which makes the most sense, is that the voxels closest to each other are the most correlated, and, um, and, the, and the ones that are least, the voxels that are least like your voxel of interest will show a, 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 darker, a darker blue color. Um, and what you can do with this is you can find genes. So if you were to use the crosshairs to find a voxel in the brain, and you can look anywhere in the brain, you can then do a, a fine gene search. So if you don't know our ontology, and you just you know the basic region of the brain, um, you can actually go in and look for genes that show the highest expression in that, that area of the brain. So this is a spatial search at the voxel level that you can do inside of our, our, inside of our brain space. OK. So now, once you've found a gene, which is difficult when the website's not working, so I'm just going to go to, for example, RORB. So if you've got a list of genes up, so the RORB is it's actually a, a, specific, a specific gene for layer four, yes? It's, layer, it's a layer four marker. If you find a gene that, that shows, uh, shows this, the kind of expression that you're interested in, one of the things you can do is if you click on the gene name, you can see that. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this in the coronal, since it's, it's got more coverage of the brain. So, so now there's, there's this. You've, got, you've now entered it into this box on the right, the correlative search. So what you can do now is you could do a search. You can do it either throughout the entire brain, or you can just do it in the cortex, and find genes that show a similar expression pattern. 
This is also done at the voxel level. So if you do a search inside the cortex and there is actually a, a gradient or a gradient throughout the stratum that, that you're looking for, it's a, it's a, the correlative search is at the voxel level. So you can actually recapitulate the, the gradient pattern uh, by doing a correlative search. And what gets returned is a list of genes that show very similar expression patterns. So, um, <coughs> the, so the, it's interesting that ones that are most similar to it are hypothetical genes. Let's see. This one, so cadherin, cadherin H6, or cadherin 6 is a, so when I did this, I'm just going to write these down. So ROR and CDH6. So these are two genes that seem to be localized in a similar pattern in the, in the cortex. Okay, so uh, that's the exercise, and we're going to come back to that. Okay, that, that's the, one, of the, one of the first things that I wanted you to do is find two genes. Okay, and then um, now what we want to do is we want to jump into the cell types database. So uh, uh, Costas talked about this, uh, about this earlier. But this, what we're, what we're trying to do is systematically interrogate, interrogate each of these cells. And we want to uh, collect enough data to be able to have a data-driven taxonomy of, of the different cell types. If we, if we go into the cell types database here. And, and what you can see from this right now is that we have uh, 800, 800 some cells online, which seems like a lot, but it's definitely not enough to do the kind of taxonomy that we're, that we're interested in. So this is a, so we're in this, for this particular atlas, we are still in the collecting data stage. And, you know, we've, we've collected electrophysiology, and there's, just to, just to give you a sense, there's a lot of quality control that goes into the data so that we, we can trust the data from the beginning to the end of the recording. And, uh, and then, uh, Cost is talking about the different kinds of stimuli that, we, that we've used for it. We're also using uh, transgenic lines. So you can see RORB is one of them. You know, uh, we've got uh, both excitatory as well as inhibitory lines. And we cross them with a reporter so that you've, you can actually see those, those particular cells. So uh, that's how our technicians will will uh, patch a particular cell as they'll see it glowing. But we also have cells that are negative. So uh, the, the technicians will actually patch a cell that's close by one of the fluorescent cells so that we can, so that we can sample other cells uh, from, that, from that particular uh, uh, transgenic line. We also uh, fill the cell once we've recorded it with biocytin. And then we take a 20x image as, as well as a 63x image. And this is uh, actually a stack of images that uh, was manually reconstructed uh, to start to create the models that Costas was talking about. But we take these two different images because once you have a, a 20x and we know exactly where this slice came from, you can actually put it back into um, our common coordinate framework. So this is, this is our, the, the 3D brain. And we actually know where each one of these cells is located at the level of the brain inside of our common coordinate framework. So to navigate this, this database, so you can, you can go online and just start looking at this. There's several different things to, to look for. So the first is the mouse line. So this is a handy little chart. So even if you don't know what each of these different cell lines and what's specific about them, it, we, we tell you, you know, that we, they're uh, putatively excitatory, putatively inhibitory. Um, they, we also tell you what layers those cells are enhanced in. You can also just look by layer. So we're showing all of the different layers here. Um, you can look for uh, positive or negative uh, fluorescence. So I told you some of the cells that we picked, we chose close by cells that weren't fluorescent, and those would be the negative cells. 
Um, you can look under EFIS or uh, morphology features using this parallel coordinates. So this par parallel coordinates plot, this one shows you all of the different cells, but you can actually access the different axes. You can uh, click and drag on them to isolate the different, different, uh, different features, either electrophysiology or, morpholo or morphology features to narrow down your uh, selection. Um, we also have started to cluster the cells based on their morphology, so you can, you can get a sense here. This is uh, PIA, white matter, with cortical depth, and you can see the different kinds of neurons that, these are, these are actually, all of the neurons of this type were superimposed, and so there's a, there's a, a likeness to the morphology. We, this data isn't complete yet, but we're, we're, you know, one of the things that we do at the Allen Institute is we release all of the data and, you know, let you have at it. There are people who have actually published on our data before we published, uh, published on it. So, um, and, and we haven't yet worked out all of the user interface yet. So if there's something that you're interested in seeing or interested, if there's a way that you're interested in, in, in interacting with the data, I definitely want to know that. So you can look based on the morphology. Uh, you can base it ba on the uh, on the Cree line or the depth or the e excitatory versus inhibitory. Um, you can also do this with the electrophysiology. So we've got five basic groups that we've started to, uh, to uh, cluster the electrophysiological data in as well. And then you can also do it via the transcriptomics. So I want to talk a little bit about the transcriptomics, and yes, uh, Basilka, you know, I'll, I'm, I want to walk through uh, the, the different ways we have of looking at the transcriptomics. So we've, we've now started pipelining. Um, okay, yeah, so if you go on, first of all, before I, before I go, into, go into that, what I'd like you to do is find, find cells in the layer the specific layer you were looking at earlier. And then just narrow down your search. So you can narrow it down based on the layer, you can narrow it down based on the, the mouse line, the Cree line. And then what you want to do is pick a single cell. So I was looking at Layer four. So these are all the, the cells from layer four. And then you can pick a single cell just by clicking on it. So pick a single cell experiment. Just find a single cell, cell from the layer that you're looking at. Okay. and. So then just let me know, first of all, does your cell have morphology? So that's, that's we, we have looked at thousands of cells. Anybody, any electrophysiologists in the room? Is there any? Okay, so you, you can probably tell me, you know, that you can, we, to get 800 cells that were good enough to go online, we patched thousands of cells. So there's, there, there's a, we just put the best data online. And then not every one of those cells uh, could we do morphology of. You know, the, we actually, it was done manually, so the, our anatomists had to go and look and see whether or not they could actually reconstruct those cells. So um, we have more than 800 cells online, but there's only 200 some that have morphology. And, and it's only the morphology cells that have the biophysical models, is that right? right? And is it also the glyph models? No, okay, yeah. So it's just it's the, the biophysical models will only be on cells that have morphology. And then you can actually go in and look for the different stimuli. So if you if you click through to that page, you'll actually see the different uh, the, the different kinds of stimuli. So there's some cells that only have two or three stimuli, so and then there's and then you can look and see which models. So this one only has the leaky integrate and fire, and fire mo models. And then how you would tell if it, was, if it has fluorescence is from the cell reporter here. 
So mine says positive. So if it has fluorescence, it says positive here. So now, um, and this data is available to download. So you can actually download the, if you click through on the morphology, What it will take you to is a, uh, a reconstructed version if you have morphology. Um, and it's, so you can, you can see this, this cell. It's not, it's not entirely clear. This one's a little, it's, it's, not, it's not a great image, but they were still able to reconstruct it. And what you're looking at here is, a, is an image stack. You can actually go through and look at each of the different, the di the, the different layers here. And the reconstruction actually fills in some of the, some of the features, the axon, the dendrites, where it was uh, truncated. <coughs> so how might you determine, right? How might you determine if your cell is of the same type as the gene markers you found earlier? Are you looking at, are you looking at that cell? That's actually the, our goal, ultimately. Um, is to be able to do that. And one of the ways is to look at the transcriptomics. Now, we are definitely in the process of building up this, this data set. So you can get gene expression from, this, from the cell types app, which is in the RNA-seq, but you're only going to have uh, LGN the, uh, or LGD, which is you know, either one that's the same but it's the, the geniculate nucleus, because that's the only data that we've got online so far. We've actually collected uh, a lot of data from the visual cortex, but that's not gonna go online until, uh, until October. So you should keep your eye at this, at this space, here, the, uh, the RAC page, because there's gonna be more data. So if you're gonna look at the visual cortex, if you're gonna look in the layers, how you wanna do it is from the uh, transcriptomics vignette, which I wanna show you. So to get to the transcriptomics, the, the, the application that Basilka talked about earlier, um, there's a, on the home page, there's what's called science vignettes, and it cycles through. So you want to go make sure you get the cellular taxon taxonomy of the visual cortex. And this is actually a, a really extraordinary, here, let's see. So it's a, it, it, and Tim Dolbear is one of our technology um, people who, who created this. It's actually quite, it's, it's, a, it's actually a, a beautiful visualization and the, and the text goes through and talks you through the different, um, the different things that you see happening in this, in this figure. So, so it's a, but once you, you can, and I, I recommend that you go through and, and look at the data, but if you, once you go into it, you can just hit explore this data. And there's a couple things, just, just so that, wow, well, look at this, this is a, this is not an ideal, let's see. I'm just control, yeah, that's. So just so that you can get a sense of it better. So what you're looking at now is the, is the clustering of these different cell types. Uh, you can actually click on a node and just isolate the different types, or you can uh, isolate them um, over here. But each one of these is, is not only the, the Cree type, the, the Cree line, but also where it was dissected from. Right, so you can see some of these are negative cells from these different, these different regions, okay? So this is, this is uh, and then what, what you're looking at uh, in this, this graph, the size of the, of, this, of the circle is the percentage of the cells that fall into that particular bin. And then if I, let's see if I go back, you get all these cells. So this, so this is interactive, but you can also, interact with the heat map. So your heat map likely was set on this Z-score. 
but when it, you, you can also look at the normalized data, which becomes valuable. Because one of the things you can do with this is that now you can, you can actually look at those two genes. Oops, RORB and CDH6. If you type those in, you'll actually see those, those cells come up. So all these different cells, and you can actually go in and look and see if those cells are, are uh, co-expressed. So the rest of the gene expression data that we have is, uh, is a correlation. So we didn't do the experiment except in a very few cases of actually looking for co-expression of genes in the same cells. Uh, for the most part, it's just uh, similar. It's, it's different experiments. So we can't really say anything about co-expression. But the single cell data will tell you something about, uh, about expression. So uh, there's a couple things that just to point you to now then. So a lot of you are computationally inclined. So the, all of the data is accessible, all of our data is accessible through our, um, uh, our API. And that is available, again, from, the, from this drop-down menu. So it's a, so the API is a REST-based approach. Right, so your, for those of you who uh, are computationally inclined, basically it's, and that, that's, how, that's how our web apps access our API is through the URLs. But it turns out that for a lot of people it is kind of incomprehensible. So one of the things that we've created and we're starting to develop a, a more fully flesh out is the, the Allen Software Development Kit or the, um, the SDK. And this is a Python wrapper around the, around the API that will allow you to use simple Python script to pull out the, the data that you're interested in. So what I recommend is that uh, you take a look at the API, but it might actually be easier just to start off with the Allen SDK. And from there, you can access the kind of data that you're interested in. So here's the, here's the API, and I, you know, I know that there were people who were interested in registering data to the, the 3D, the, the, the common coordinate framework, um, but I also recommend uh, going to the SDK. And there's um, examples as well as uh, the code for, you know, so, so if you're looking for the, you can actually go through and look and that there, there are, example scripts on how to pull out the data that you're interested in.